Hi, I'm Claire Rummage, and I'm a clinical oncology pharmacist at the Kirkland Clinic at UAB Hospital. I have nothing to disclose, and here are my objectives for today. Breast cancer treatment can include intravenous therapy, oral therapy, or even injections, or even a combination of the three. Therapies can range from traditional chemotherapy to more targeted therapies. Endocrine therapy is the backbone for hormone receptor positive breast cancer and can include antiestrogens like tamoxifen, aromatase inhibitors like letrozole, which may or may not require co-administration of ovarian suppression like gosrelin. Tamoxifen is one of the most common antiestrogens used. A key thing to remember with tamoxifen is the significant drug interactions with strong CYP2D6 inhibitors like fluoxetine and peroxetine. So our go-to antidepressants with patients on tamoxifen are venlafaxine, citalopram, or escitalopram. The most common side effect of aromatase inhibitors are arthralgias and hot flashes. Ovarian suppression can cause menopausal symptoms, and there are some data to show that SNRIs, gabapentin, clonidine, and oxybutynin can help for hot flashes. If females are having vaginal atrophy, it's important to educate patients to use non-hormonal treatments like moisturizers and lubricants. Oral HER2-directed therapies include neratinib, ticatinib, and lapatinib, all of which are tyrosine kinase inhibitors and are known to cause diarrhea. Note that neratinib has significant drug interactions with antacids. IV and subcutaneous HER2-targeted therapies are available as well. Cardiotoxicity is a well-recognized adverse effect associated with these HER2 therapies. There is a new subcutaneous trastuzumab per tuzumab combination called FESCO. Margatuxumab is a newly approved HER2 targeted therapy also. Aldotrastuzumab Mtamsine and Famtrastuzumab Deruxetecan are both HER2 therapies, but they are antibody drug conjugates. An antibody drug conjugate is an antibody bound to a cytotoxic payload through a chemical linker that is directed towards a targeted antigen expressed on the cancer cell surface. The mechanism reduces systemic exposure and therefore toxicity, but because of the cytotoxic payload, there is a class effect of bone marrow suppression. The traditional cytotoxic chemotherapy used in breast cancer include alkylating agents like platinums and cyclophosphamide, as well as anthracyclines such as doxorubicin and liposomal doxorubicin. Nephrotoxicity is a dose-limiting side effect for cisplatin, while myelosuppression is a common side effect for carboplatin. Cyclophosphamide can cause irritation of the bladder walls, leading to blood in the urine. However, doxorubicin, which is usually given in combination with cyclophosphamide, can cause red-colored urine as well. Dexorzoxane can be given for cardiotoxicity caused by doxorubicin. Antimetabolites and microtubule inhibitors are also traditional chemotherapy classes used in breast cancer. Fluorouracil and its oral prodrug capecitabine are known to cause hand and foot syndrome. Methotrexate can have some significant drug interactions with common medications, including NSAIDs, proton pump inhibitors, folic acid, and penicillins. Microtubule inhibitors like taxanes can cause hair loss, peripheral neuropathy, as well as swelling and nail changes. Transitioning to oral targeted therapy like CDK4-6 inhibitors, mTOR inhibitors, and PIK3CA inhibitors, are all indicated for hormone receptor positive HER2 negative advanced breast cancer. Here are some of the key differences in the three CDK4-6 inhibitors. Note that abemaciclib is the only CDK4-6 inhibitor with continuous dosing. With everolimus, I would recommend prescribing dexamethasone mouth rinse to help prevent mouth sores per the SWISH trial. Finally, hyperglycemia, rash, and diarrhea are three very common side effects with alpelacid. The last targeted therapies available for breast cancer patients include PARP inhibitors, NTRAC inhibitors, and immunotherapy. All of these require appropriate genetic testing to determine if they can be used. 
As we have discussed, there is a wide variety of breast cancer therapies, and I hope this continues to grow. Counseling our patients on their therapy is so important no matter the formulation because they all have potential side effects. My favorite patient education websites are IV chemo ed sheets and oral chemo ed sheets that are available and free to everyone. The education points are very reader friendly as you can see on the example shown. The takeaway points from today are that breast cancer treatments are ever evolving and are becoming more specific with targeted therapy. Oral therapy can be just as toxic as IV therapy. And finally, patient education is key. Here are the references from today.